Yo, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be going over the NBA slate on DraftKings for Saturday, February 24th. Uh, we got a seven game uh, main slate today on this Saturday. And like always guys, before we get started looking at this slate, would really appreciate it if you drop a like on the video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then make sure you click that subscribe button down below. Starting off at point guard on today's seven game slate up top here, we got Russell Westbrook, Steph Curry, Dame Lillard, pretty much our stud options at the top of this position. Um, obviously, as you can tell by the thumbnail, love Westbrook here, 11,600. Going up against the Warriors, always like to take Westbrook in these spots when he's going up against big-time opponents. Like the Warriors, maybe like the Rockets, for example. Westbrook just seems like he always gets, get up, uh, gets up for these games, really tries to play well. He's played well this year through two games against the Warriors. He's averaged 62 DraftKings points, played an average of 36 minutes. And you got to think, if this is a competitive game, uh, Westbrook's going to be one of the big reasons why He's been playing well lately, been giving you pretty much a 50-point floor. We obviously know he has that ceiling that he can get you 80 points without a problem. Uh, wouldn't really surprise me if he went for a 70 to 80 here. Love Westbrook. I think he's a good cash play. I think there's plenty of value today to where you can fit him in. We do have uh, some potential cheap value opening up. Jimmy Butler went out on Friday's game. Could uh, be a chance that he misses today. That could open up value. Some of the guys from the Bulls, like Nuwaba, uh, Felicio, they're still pretty cheap. They're considerable value plays as well. I think it's easy to pay up for a stud uh, and if I'm paying up. West, uh, Russell Westbrook, really my guy today. Since I like him so much, won't probably be won't or won't probably be on Curry or Lillard. If you do want to go for a pivot, I would go down to Curry. I think I prefer Curry over Lillard. Even though Lillard has a better matchup, I just think Curry's a better play, especially when they're so similarly priced. You're not really getting a discount uh, going down to Lillard. But those aren't really guys I'm really wanting to pay up for. Russell Westbrook, like I said. If I'm paying up at point guard, I'm going up top with him. Uh, and then looking in this mid-range, I don't like a lot of the mid-range plays here. Just feel like guys are overpriced. Like CJ McCollum's in a great spot, but he was priced up now. He uh, saw a price increase of like $1,200. If he was still like $6,500 like he was on Friday, then I'd love him here. I think he'd be a great play. But it's $7,700, don't think he's that great of a play. Don't love that matchup for Tyreek Evans. Uh, Zach Levine would be the one guy I'd play here. Against Minnesota in the revenge game, going back to Minnesota, uh, first time he's at least gone to back to the, uh, back to that stadium since he left for the Bulls. Did play against the Timberwolves once this year, but that game was in Chicago. Uh, Levine did have a nice game, put up 46 DraftKings points in 33 minutes. And if Jimmy Butler is out today, that will be a much better matchup for Zach Levine. You would think that uh, Jimmy Butler would be guarding Levine if Butler is able to play, but if Butler's out, much better matchup for Levine. I'm not a big fan of his price, but with the Revenge game narrative with possibly Jimmy Butler being off the court. Uh, I do like Jim or I do like Zach Levine there in that mid tier, but I don't think he's really got him forcing in today. Mainly wanting to pay up for Westbrook here or just try and find some cheap value. You could also do the revenge narrative for Chris Dunn. This is the first time that Chris Dunn has faced the Timberwolves this year since he went to Chicago. He did play for Minnesota last year, so it's a revenge game for him. You could play Chris Dunn if you want to do that narrative. But mainly this is where I think we can find some value if we're not trying to pay up. There aren't other mid-tier plays that I'm kind of skipping over, like I think Brandon Ingram, a fine play. If Rubio gets back to full minutes, he could be a really good play at 6,100. He really struggled on Friday, first game back from injury, uh, but if he doesn't like have any restrictions today against Dallas, you love that matchup. You could play Rubio, you could play Ingram, but I don't think those are really guys I'm jamming in today. Mainly looking for some value here. Andrew Harrison, a guy that's been playing really well lately. Not the best matchup against Miami, but... I do like Harrison here for some value. He's been getting the minutes lately, and he is still really cheap at just 4700 Pretty likely he's able to pay off this price tag. You could use Harrison as a value play. You could maybe go to Moutier as well. You could maybe go to Moutier as well at that same price tag. Not the best matchup for Moutier, but if he's going to continue to start at point guard for the Knicks and going to see at least 25 minutes, you could play him for value. He did start their last game against the Magic. Only played 23 minutes. Was a pretty disappointing game. I was pretty high on him that day because he was getting the start. I think he play, I thought he would play close to 30 minutes. That wasn't the case. Trey Burke got some good minutes off the bench, kind of took away minutes from Moutier. Uh, but if you think Moutier is going to start again and play close to 30 minutes, you've got to consider him as a value play because uh, he can do so much when he's on the court. Moutier and Harrison are the two value plays I really see here. If you think Trey Burke continues to play well off the bench, you could play him. feel like it's kind of point chasing, but he did play 30 minutes their last game against the Magic. And put up 44 DraftKings points. We know the Knicks really don't care about this season. They're going to play these young guys. Uh, they're going to give some of these guys off the bench big minutes. And Trey Burke could be seeing 
20 to 25 minutes just about every game for the rest of the season since the Knicks really don't have anything to play for. But he is really only a tournament play. Not sure if I want to go there in cash games today. Uh, that's why I'm seeing a point guard for the value. So let's go ahead and look at shooting guard. You've got Jimmy Butler up top here at 10-2, but good chance he does not play today. He did leave on Friday uh, on an injury. I didn't really see the injury, but I was hearing people saying it didn't look very promising. did look uh, kind of like a serious injury. Good chance Butler misses today. Even if Butler plays, I'm not sure if I want to pay 10200 for him. You love the matchup, especially the revenge game. He crushed his former team earlier this year, putting up 63 drafting points against them. But uh, just at 10-2, I'd rather get up to Westbrook today. I just think there's a good chance Butler misses anyway, so not really going to try and force him in. I think if he misses, that could open up some really good value that we'll talk about later. So I'm not really trying to pay up at shooting guard. Don't like a lot of the options here. Don't feel like these are guys I have to have. I think there's a clear value play at shooting guard, at least, that really catches my eye. Uh, but if you do want to go to like this mid-range, you've got plays here I've kind of already mentioned, like Levine, Chris Dunn you could play here. But like I said, those aren't guys I'm really trying to jam in today. Mainly going for value. Like some of the value here. Uh, especially with David Nwaba. I think he's one of the better value plays on this slate. Just 4,600 in a matchup against the Timberwolves. I really like Nwaba here, especially if Jimmy Butler misses. Uh, that becomes a much better matchup for Nwaba if Butler's off the court. And we know the Bulls are going to start Nwaba uh, and Cristiano Felicio, it looks like, for a while now. So Nwaba's going to continue to get minutes. He played 33 minutes in the last game that he started and put up 40 draftings points. He did see a big price increase up to 4,600, but I still think it's likely... Uh, the new Wab is able to pay this off, especially if he just continues to get the minutes. Love him as a value option at shooting guard. I think he's a clear play here if we're really looking to go cheap. I didn't talk about a lot of the mid-tier plays just because I don't feel like I'm going to be forcing guys in. Like Isaiah Thomas, Josh Jackson, Berea, Jalen Brown. I don't feel like these are guys that are really going to burn me. If you want to go to this mid-range, you could play like Chris Dunn, who I kind of already mentioned, Levine. I guess you could play Curry here if you want to pay for him, but mainly new Wab at shooting guard is where I'm really looking to go today. Um, so moving on to small forward, looking at this position, I think there's more clear value here that we can con uh, that we can target if Butler's out. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but up top here, besides Butler, you've got Kevin Durant uh, going up against OKC. I think Durant's fine on this slate, uh, but like I said, just I want to pay it for Westbrook, and I don't think Durant's the guy I have to have. And I actually think I would rather play Curry in that same spot for just a couple hundred more. And you also got Paul, uh, Paul George up top as well, but he's up to 9,300. He's had a lot of success in this Warriors matchup. He's done well uh, through two games against the Warriors. He's averaged 56 draftings points. So him and Westbrook have both played really well in this matchup. But George is up to 9,300. And that just feels like too much to pay for Paul George, especially with some of the good value I see at this position. Mainly looking to the mid-tier at small forward and going cheap in this mid-range. Uh, love Michael Beasley here. 6,300 in a matchup against Boston. We can definitely attack Boston if we want to attack them. We can do it at the power forward position, which is the position that Beasley plays. I do worry about taking Knicks right now because they're kind of tanking. They're not really giving their starters full minutes. Beasley only played 23 minutes their last game against the Magic. I know uh, Ennis Cantor only played like 21 minutes, which is very scary. Definitely concerning, but uh, I think Beasley, he's going to play at least, I'd say, 25 minutes. If he's playing really well, if the Knicks want to actually win a game, they're going to give Beasley minutes. Uh, he's played... 40 minutes, 39 minutes, last two games, at least before that game where he only played 23 minutes. You really don't know with Beasley. I'm not sure if I want to consider him a cash play, even though at 6,300, it feels like you could go to him in cash just given that price. Uh, but with the minutes being so inconsistent, now that the Knicks are kind of just kind of full-blown tanking, uh, Beasley really would only use him in tournaments, but he still has so much upside, especially if he does play his normal amount of minutes, 30 to 35. Very likely he's able to get 6x. Uh, so I love Beasley in that mid-range. You also got like Ingram, who I've mentioned, you could play for a little bit cheaper, but I think I'd much rather have Beasley. Uh, another guy in this mid-range I want to mention uh, is TJ Warren here. He's only 5,700. Really just mentioned TJ Warren because I think he's way too cheap. 5,700 just feels like too cheap of a price. I know Warren's kind of been crap in the bed lately, been really disappointing. Last game against Utah, he only put up six draftings points. 26 against Golden State wasn't that great. He's hasn't had a lot of success in this matchup, only putting up 19 draftings points through two games against Portland, uh, but that's just mainly a price play. 5700 just because TJ Warren, I feel like that's too cheap of a price. Uh, but going for the value here, this is where I see a clear play. Really, really dirt cheap. Going to be probably one of the better value plays on this slate. If Jimmy Butler is out today, Nemanja Bialica at 3400 in a matchup against the Bulls. You have to like Bialica here for value. 
He's going to play close to 30 minutes if Jimmy Butler's out. We know he's going to get the start. He has started this year when Butler has misses, uh, when Butler has missed, and he's gotten the minutes. And at 3,400, if he's going to play close to 30 minutes at this dirt cheap price, you have to like Bielitsa as a value option. I think he's a great play on this slate. If Jimmy Butler's out, we can confirm that before lock. Hopefully we get the news before lock. Uh, this Chicago-Minnesota game is one of the last games on the slate, which is a bit concerning, but uh, that Butler injury kind of looks serious. You'd think we'd get some news on it sometime tomorrow. And if we do get the news before lock, the Butler's not going to play, then Bielitsa, great value option, just 3400 uh, But that's what I see as small forward. So moving on to power forward and looking at plays I haven't already mentioned, kind of a lot of plays here I've kind of already talked about. you got Draymond Green, Julius Randle, some top options here if you want to play them. I think Draymond's a fine play at 7800 Definitely not uh, like my favorite option on this slate, but I think he's able to pay off that price. You need about 38 from Draymond. He's been averaging 37 DK points, or you need 38 from him to pay off that price. On the year, he's been averaging 37, so you could play Draymond if you're paying up a power forward, but I don't think he's a guy I'm forcing in. In his canter, I'm kind of worried about his minutes, even though his price has come down. He's very intriguing at that price. I'm really worried about Cantor's minutes, especially kind of for the rest of the season if the Knicks are going to decide to tank and just not give these guys minutes. But Cantor in tournaments could be a really good play at 6,800. Al Horford seems too cheap at 6,600, but I don't think he's a, really a must play on this slate, a guy you have to have. The guy that I really want in the 6K range that I'm having my eye on right now is Bobby Portis, 6,100 in that same game uh, going up against Minnesota. Love Bobby Portis today especially if Robin Lopez gets another DNP. Lopez did not play in their game on Thursday uh, against the Sixers. Bobby Portis and Felicio were really the only two guys that got minutes at center. And Felicio kind of got into some early foul trouble and just didn't play a lot of minutes at all. He only played like 11 minutes in that game. Portis played most of the minutes, 34 minutes last game against the Sixers, 53 drafting points. I think we kind of see Portis and Felicio get most of the minutes. I don't think Lopez is really going to play much for the rest of the season. And even though Portis' price tag... It's starting to come up to 6,100. The guy just has so much upside. If he's going to be playing 30 minutes a night, which is definitely possible for the rest of the season, uh, then Portis is going to be a great play. Might want to hop on him now while he's only 6,100. Very good chance. He's up to 7, close to 8K, maybe uh, towards the end of the season. And just think Porter's an all-around safe play on the slate that should get the minutes. So really like him against Minnesota. I think he's a great option if you're going to that 6K range. And this 5K price range, like, Carmelo seems too cheap against the Warriors, but I don't think I really have to have Melo on this slate. TJ Warren, I kind of already mentioned, 5,700, you can play him. Markkinen seems too cheap, especially if Lopez misses again. Markkinen should get the minutes. Uh, he did disappoint in their last game, but don't mind going back to the well on Markkinen. If you want to play him at 5,700, uh, then going for the value here. Not a lot of value I see. I really like that I have to have at power forward. Mainly want some of these mid-tier plays. I think Felicio's down here. At 3,600, you could play Felicio if you're going cheap. He did start in their last game. It uh, looks like he's going to continue to start just for the rest of the season, maybe for the Bulls. But he only played 12 minutes in that game against the Sixers and only put up nine drafting points. Did, uh, did get into some early foul trouble, but I just don't think we can rely on Felicio. I feel like Portis, the much safer option, the, just the guy that's going to get the consistent minutes, and he's the guy I really want at power forward. That's really the price range I want to go at this position. Like Portis here. I think you can play Beasley in this, or you can play Beasley at power forward. You got guys like Horford you can play here. Mainly, this is where I want to go uh, price rise, uh, at least price wise at this position. So let's go ahead and move on to center. You got Carl Anthony Towns at the top of this position, 9,600 uh, in that same game against the Bulls. Don't think I'm really trying to pay up for Towns on this slate. I think there are better stud options. I think I'd rather go to like Curry, even Durant. Uh, obviously, I want to get up to Westbrook today. Don't think I'm going to be paying up for Towns. Don't really think. I'm paying up for center in general. Gobert's in a really good spot against Dallas, but 7,300 for Gobert just seems like too much. You could play Steven Adams at 6,900 uh, going, up against, going up against the Warriors. He's had some decent success in this matchup as well. 33 DraftKings points. He's averaged through two games against the Warriors, but Adams really isn't a guy I feel like I have to have on this slate. It's probably another position where I'm looking to play guys in that same range as Portis. Mostly play Portis here if I can. If Randolph somehow rests today, he did play their last game. If Randolph rests, uh, you could definitely play Willie Colley Stein at 6,200. If Randolph plays and is going to get full minutes, then I definitely do like Randolph at 6,300 against the Lakers. I think he's a great play. Uh, if we can confirm, he's going to start and get the minutes. But the one value play I do see at center that I like is Alex Lynn, 5,100, uh, going up against Portland. If Lynn is going to start here, if Tyson Chandler misses 
again for this game. Chandler did miss their last game on Friday against the Clippers, and Lynn, uh, Lynn did draw the start. If that's the case again here today against Portland, you don't love the matchup, but Lynn, whenever he's on the court, he's going to grab rebounds, and he's going to score the ball as well, and will get you some fantasy points. He's up to 5,100, but it's still likely he's able to pay off that price tag if the minutes are there. Uh, with Chandler possibly being out again, you would think the minutes are going to be there. So I like Lynn as a value play if you want to go to him at 5,100 if you're going cheap at this position. But that's really what I'm seeing for options that really stand out to me. So I think that's pretty much it for center, and I think that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, just make sure you give it a like, and if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click that subscribe button down below. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitter, at the DFS underscore goat. You just want to talk, DM me. I'm always on Twitter, just always active on there, and that's probably the best way you can contact me is through Twitter. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching, and good luck tonight on this slate. Peace.